Hickok 45, your internet shooting companion, coming to you from the beautiful hills of Middle Tennessee. Yes, Tennessee, the home of Dolly Parton, Alvin York, Davy Crockett, Jeff Quinn, <laughs> who else? Oh yeah, it's good to be from Tennessee right now, because it's not hot and humid as it often is, as you know from seeing me sweat in videos. Perspire, excuse me. Uh, it's, it's, uh, well, it's fall, you know, and, uh, the air is crisp and clear for a change. So that's nice. That's very nice. Sorry, I've been remiss in getting back to you on the shooting the breezes. Uh, I just can't seem to get to them. I'll, I'll say, yeah, I think I'll do most tomorrow. I've been getting requests and then I'll, I just don't get out the stuff. I got a to-do list of my long and I'm doing this and I just don't get the camera out, put it on a tripod, and, and do this. I'm sorry. I know your life is not complete without a shooting the breeze, right? <clears throat> no, I do appreciate our loyal viewers watching, uh, because I would assume, again, that you must uh, you'd be a little sick or you wouldn't watch me sit in a chair and talk to you, you know, because I really don't have anything too profound to say, probably, you know, unless I luck upon it. But anyway, we, we appreciate you all. We appreciate all of our viewers, you know, uh, not just the people sick enough to, to watch one of these or listen to this, but because uh, these are more casual, even in a regular video, not shooting generally, although you never know. Look what I've got. AR-15 evil. Yeah. <clears throat> so anyway, yeah, it has been a while. I'll, I'll try to do better. I can't guarantee it. Uh, maybe I should go back to doing the radio shows. They were simpler to do. Uh, I know you miss seeing my face in the radio show, which is really a podcast. We just called it a radio show <laughs> and I just yak at you. So been mean to do it and thought I would make myself do it this, this week. It's Friday as I do this. Okay. <clears throat> wow. And, uh, it has, has been a while. So it is good to, good to talk to you. Y'all look good. Yeah, you really do. All, well, I don't know, however many of you. Uh, you look pretty good. Some of you don't look so good. There's a few of you a little ugly, but you know, work on it, work on it. There's makeup out there. You know, uh, I had the cat here a minute. He's lying over there. He was in my lap. He came over, but as soon as I start talking, he wants to, it, it scares him. I mean, he knows I'm insane, but, uh, you know, I guess when I start talking, he kind of looks around and, and who's this guy talking to? I'm getting away from him. <laughs> But he is quite a lap cat. Uh, he's actually a good cat, believe it or not. He's like a golden retriever in a cat's body. And I never thought I'd see that. Right, kitty? Come, why not you come over here and see the people? Huh? Why not you come over here, buddy? Oh, just lying here looking at me. Have you ever noticed it's hard to herd a cat and get them to do what you want them to do? <clears throat> so, what are we going to talk about? Uh, well, maybe a couple of things. Uh, I, you know, I'm low on battery power. Yeah, I'm a, that's good. I should do this every time. I have about 30 minutes of battery. It'll keep me honest. But, uh, oh, gosh, it's been two or three months. We've been to the Smokies, been to Michigan, and worked on that zombie movie, Strain 100, and uh, shot a lot of firearms. Uh, you've missed a lot of gabbing about a lot of useless stuff by my being negligent, not getting out the tripod and, and doing a shooting the breeze. <clears throat> so anyway, I'll touch on a few things. First and most important though, before we get into some of the more mundane things, I wanted to make sure that I mention, and John and I are going to do a video on this probably within a few days, uh, more length, and we'll both yak about it and, and share our views and everything. He's not here today. Keep me honest uh, or on topic, but uh, the uh, the bill proposed in, in Congress, the H.R. 3999, I believe is the number, uh, you know, to ban, <coughs> trigger, let's see, what does it say? I brought it out so I remember the... <clears throat> To prohibit the manufacture, possession, or transfer of any part or combination of parts as designed and functions to increase the rate of fire of a semi-automatic rifle. Okay, but it's not convert to a semi-automatic rifle, to a machine gun, etc. Et so anyway, the increasing the rate of fire, you know, could involve a lot of different things. And that's the bill. Uh, we knew it was coming. Duh. I mean, who, who, <laughs> who did not know something like this uh, pretty uh, crazy would be coming after the Las Vegas shooting, you know. 
uh, and of course, which is why the NRA tried to head it off, and that's another topic. Uh, some of you don't agree with me on that, but uh, yeah, seemed to me like maybe the right thing, the only thing to do at the time. I don't know. We'll find out, but uh, uh, there's certainly no evil intent. I'm <laughs> certain of that, you know. But anyway, maybe it worked, maybe it, it didn't, maybe it was a bad move. I don't know, but that's another topic. So anyway, they knew it was coming. That's one of the reasons for their their action, but. Uh, it's here and of course the NRA is going to try to defend it but it's really up to us it's really up to us and just want to remind you particularly I'd say newer shooters maybe or some of you who have not been through this you know we're still I mean we have regularly a thousand fifteen hundred new subscribers every single day you know it has slowed down a bit and it and and I'm assuming a lot of you you know that's a bunch every week or or, or month you might not be into shooting in a big way. You're just getting into shooting. And I hear from uh, lots of you, of course, and I know that's the case. You just got a gun. You're thinking about buying a gun. or You just have a handful of firearms. And you just started looking around at videos and information on, on the web. And so you're kind of new to this. So since the last big event like this, political event or, or tragedy, let's just say tragedy, uh, you've not been through this maybe like I have. I mean, I've got whiplash. I've been through so many of these. And uh, I mean, that's one reason I don't just run and get all excited every time. I've been through so many of these events and these cycles uh, that I, I guess I assume people are keeping up with it. And some other people who do videos uh, kind of almost focus on this sort of thing and just making sure everybody's aware of everything. They do a good job at it. And, I, you know, I don't feel like it's a big gap if we don't run to the camera, you know. But anyway, uh, I needed to do a shooting the breeze, so I wanted to mention it because you know we have a large, large, large audience. Uh, if you are someone who has not been keeping up with it, uh, or just barely, you know, check that out. What that bill exactly entails, and you know, Google around a little bit. Uh, but you don't even have to do that. You need to well, you do, but get the names. They're out there all over the place. Look at Such's video. Such Double O uh, did a great job on his video on this recently. I shared it on Facebook and a lot of comments on that and everything. And uh, it, uh, he outlines uh, everything about it and uh, the names of the uh, congressmen, congresspeople, and all that behind it. So you need to be sure you're contacting your representatives. Okay, make certain. That's the biggest thing: calling, emailing, writing uh, your representatives and letting them know what you think about it. All right. And I, and I will say, whatever you think about it, you know, if you you think a lot of stuff should be banned, you need to be politically active. Really, you really do. I don't want to help the gun banners or the, uh, uh, you know, the, the left or the right take away my freedoms. But everybody should be politically active. That's it's the uh, I, I prefer pro Second Amendment people, especially are active, of course, but you know, you should be active. Let let your representatives know what you think about things. You're, that's 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 part of your obligation as a citizen of this country. It really is. If you're not voting, and you're not staying in contact, get at it. Get at it. They don't care what you say on an internet forum. They don't care what you complain and gripe about at the local gun shop or in your blog or in a video. They don't care. What they care is what they hear. Okay, tallying the votes. Uh, lots of times it is just uh, it's somebody in their office is going, but they're tallying the votes. Keep after them. Make sure you, you get your voice heard. Uh, and when it's in big numbers, it makes a difference. Okay, if you're not doing that, you're not, you're not contact, you're not even voting. You know, you get what you deserve. And, and unfortunately, the rest of us get what we don't deserve, maybe. So it's sad. Some states where it's like, wow, there's no hope. I hear from you on that. I, I feel your pain. It's like, wow, there's just no chance, but you still have to do it. And then make sure you're, you, maybe the work in your state, if you've got someone who's just incorrigible, you know they're never going to vote for gun right ever. Uh, you still need to stay in touch, but maybe it's more important even to, to work to get them out of that seat, whatever that takes. You know, get some other people running, uh, change people's minds in your community, in your city, in your county. I, I don't know, it's a tough job. I realize you hate to just leave. But, but anyway, uh, getting off topic, like I always do, because I'm, I'm uh, attention deficit uh, uh, 
suffering here, and uh, I always do that. But make sure you're contacting your representatives on this bill, you know, H.R. 3999. That, that's so important that, that we got to. So we got to gear up just like we did after Sandy Hook. And uh, you're going to be hearing a lot about it, you know, through all through the Second Amendment uh, you know, folks on, on the web and, and everywhere else. And it's a shame we have to do this. I mean, uh, it really is a shame. During the Las Vegas incident, almost, you know, the anti-gunners came out of the woodwork. And that's what I always hate. You know, they don't even give you time to, to wow, to kind of suffer with these people. Uh, you know, that, that was such a horrible event. And, you know, it's just right away, they're talking guns and banning guns. It just makes you sick. It really does. And uh, it, was a, it was a crazy week. Um, I, I saw it so sad for those people and then their families and everything. And you sit and watch the news. And, of course, for some of us that do shooting videos, it was even stranger than fiction. The whole event was stranger than fiction. But then we're seeing ourselves on the news. You know, I saw myself and people sending me links and you know over and over and over what they were seeing all over the country and planet of of me uh shooting and, and demonstrating a bump fire stock uh juxtaposed there with the, the massacre footage and all this stuff you know it's like wow i'm becoming public enemy number one right here before my eyes you know uh, over a bump fire stock i've not even touched in three years i guess i don't know when we did a last video on that it's you know I don't have anything against bump fire stocks. Yeah, there are people who are low info uh, internet browsers, maybe you call them. I don't know. <laughs> Drama channel browsers or whatever. You know, that guy wants to ban. I don't want to ban anything. You know, the NRA doesn't want to ban anything. So, uh, it, it's just, it's crazy. I mean, I'm not in love with those things. I, you know, it's, you know, I don't, I don't really have a, a use for myself, but I mean, I have a use for a lot of things relating to firearms. Uh, that's irrelevant. You know, it, we can't let them ban anything. Okay, they don't need to be banning anything. Uh, so anyway, I was just kind of thinking at the time, and still, that the NRA was probably taking the only course they could at the time, and uh, you know, then trying to keep it out of Congress. You know, so I, I don't know. Some people don't don't think that, and that's that's fine. Uh, but. Uh, but anyway, the, the bill is the main thing right now. Okay, we we can worry about the NRA later. The bill is the big deal. That's where the battle is now, it looks like. I don't guess the the ATF would uh, still, you know, rule on it or something and, and take the teeth out of that. I, I, I don't know. Politics is such a complex thing, and lobbying's got to be a crazy world to be in. And, of course, that's why we pay uh, our gun rights organizations and, of course, the gigantic one, the IRA. Uh, so they do that, you know, they're the experts, they know what's going on, they've got their fingers on the pulse, and uh, just like the NRA, they knew, they could have probably, uh, about one or two days into this, named all those those uh, people in Congress that were going to side with uh, the gun ban that's coming out now, this bill, you know, 3999, they probably could have named them and told you at the time, and uh, I would assume that's the reasons for, uh, some of the reasons for their actions, but... Uh, uh, I don't know. You know, some people disagree, and I, you know, I tend to give people the benefit of the doubt until they prove otherwise. That's just kind of the way I am. You know, so I've been a member of the NRA, so decades and decades and decades, and I don't plan for that to change unless I have good cause, and that good cause would not be because there's a bunch of goofballs around the internet uh, trying to get clicks. You know, by being dramatic about things, they they just trying to be dramatic about things to get attention. I don't know. It would be because uh, oh, the good cause would have to be that the NRA has changed its philosophy and its position on things that I don't agree with. Okay? And then I'd be gone. So anyway, it's kind of just the way I think about things. But again, I didn't mean to get into that. Uh, John will be mad at me because we're going to discuss some more of these things at length uh, next week. Uh, mainly the bill. Be sure you're doing what's needed, okay? All right. So, uh, you got to be active. Got to be active right now, whatever your thoughts are. So, wow, it, it is exhausting in a lot of ways. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know if we, you know, if I can complain, if you can complain, most of us don't have 
too much of a leg to stand on to complain a lot when you think about those poor folks that got shot from some window four or five hundred yards away and the family i mean it's so sad and so crazy it's just absolutely crazy uh, gee. so but still it you know politically and in every other way and it's it's been kind of strange and then and again and we've got a, a political fight on our hands you know so all right uh, we're sure sorry about all those people in that event and everything that happened, but here we go. We've got to protect our rights, and uh, that's just the way it is. And uh, and again, as I've said before, whenever these things come up and we talk about it, and I've done several videos where I did nothing but talk about this kind of thing. And you know, one of the things I think I've mentioned is tragedies will occur. I mean, my philosophy and my take on things may differ from yours some of you listening not, not most of you probably but a few of you possibly i fully understand that there's a risk in having dangerous firearms uh lethal firearms like this uh in such gigantic numbers in our society i mean who does not have an ar-15 these days i have several on the way man i dropped them all on the lake except for this one um uh, I fully accept they're dangerous. They're potentially dangerous. They're very lethal. Uh, but again, they are the teeth of the Second Amendment. They really are. And I personally am willing to live with the risk of someone crazy uh, getting a hold of a firearm and doing something, uh, you know, uh, crazy with it. I'm, I'm willing to take the risk personally. If, you know, if you hear that I got shot uh, walking out of Best Buy because some crazy guy decided to shoot everybody coming out of there or something. Sorry, Best Buy. Let's use an example. Walmart, uh, Kroger, what else? Uh, McDonald's coming out and just decided to, to mow some people down. I'm one of them and I'm gone tomorrow. Just know I am happy with this risk. I would not regret that a bit. Okay? that's that's But that's my philosophy. So I feel like I... I, I can speak to it because I'm willing to take that risk. I uh, really am. Now, I don't want them in the hands of crazy people, you know, but I'm not willing to go through Herculean uh, gun control efforts, police state uh, situations to prevent that. That's just me. That's just me. But so everything I think about is kind of premised on that. All right. Yeah. If they're not, if they're not lethal, if they're not pretty dangerous, then there is no Second Amendment. Second Amendment doesn't mean anything. Doesn't mean a thing. Okay. Uh, but anyway, the bill uh, I was going to say earlier, I don't know if I did, uh, <clears throat> uh, to make a firearm shoot faster, you know, well, I, the sights, good sights, enable me to shoot this firearm faster. You know, are they going to be illegal? Uh, the stock, you know, being able to adjust the stock, that enables me to shoot it faster, get it in position where it's more comfortable. What else? I don't know. Uh, well, the trigger, duh. This has a uh, replacement trigger. It's a much better trigger against Geisley in this one, I believe. And uh, that enables me to shoot it faster because it's a nice trigger. So there's no limit to what uh, they could ban. They could ban the darn rifle. You know, the fact that it's semi-automatic, that the magazine uh, holds so much. So anyway, call your representatives. So I'll calm down, okay? So, uh, and again, John and I are going to address this again in another video. Let him weigh in, and we'll talk a little bit more maybe about the, the NRA and uh, that, that kind of thing. And uh, so, go on from there. Uh, so, what else has been going on? Like I said, spent some time in the Smokies, and that was kind of cool. Saw some of the fire damage over there. Still, you can tell things burned out, of course, from last fall. I guess that's been about a year. Uh, but was in a cabin in the woods. My wife is funny. She likes to go, <laughs> rent. we have done that so many times over the years, go rent a cabin in the woods. We actually do that, you know, in the Smokies occasionally, you know, and I say, okay, yeah, that's a novel concept. Let's leave our cabin in the woods and go rent a cabin in the woods. <laughs> oh man, uh, but yeah, it's different, change your pace. And it's the Smoky Mountains, so that's that's pretty cool. And we had a bear come up on us. That doesn't happen right here. Maybe they know <clears throat> I'm well-armed, you reckon? And 
that was cool. Uh, John was right there in the living room and I was walking past the front door to the garage or something in this cabin. I looked out, I thought, whoop, whoop, you know, the double take, a big old burly bear coming right to the front door and a black bear. So that was interesting. So it made walks and just going to and from the car to load up stuff and whatever, you know, a little more interesting from then on. Uh, I always take a 10 millimeter Glock with me when I go over there. And uh, uh, for some reason, the Glock 20 became uh, a closer companion after that. But that was pretty cool. I mean, I wouldn't want to hurt a bear unless he was threatening me. But uh, it was kind of interesting to, to see that guy around. Um, and uh, it, it, I like the Smokies. It's cool. Uh, beautiful area. I think it's the most traveled uh, park, visited park in the country, believe it or not. Not to, you know, be bragging and, you know, oh, Tennessee's the best state. It just is. It's kind of at a crossroads of several interstates over there and, uh, you know, in the eastern part of the United States. It just gets visited a lot and it's, it's worthy of a visit if you've never been there. So that was kind of cool. Uh, the movie, that was another thing I was going to mention. Uh, oh man, that was, uh, that was interesting, uh, filming in a movie, you know, it's a small production. It was, uh, uh, you get a glimpse into what that world is like though, you know, even with that, that limited exposure, uh, you know, the makeup and, you know, how they go about it, you know, how they set up on a, on a set, uh, or uh, out in the field, wherever they are, you know, cause all the makeup people, people that just involved in everything, responsible for all the various aspects of the production, they might have to, as you know, they may have to go to the desert, you know, and set up for, for that. And uh, this was at various houses and different places, markets, just wherever. Uh, but they're there for the day or two or three, and uh, that's their home base. It's, it's just kind of interesting. And you get your makeup on and you sit around and. A lot of zombies. <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> there were several days where those those people, guys, gals, would be all their makeup was exquisite. I mean, they were equal to anything out of Walking Dead, uh, at least. And they were sitting around all over the place. You probably saw some pictures we posted on Facebook, including John. He was one of them. And uh, they're just kind of lounging around under a tent or whatever. So I'd sit around, and talk to them, and. Uh, got to know some zombies, uh, so it was, it was kind of neat. And uh, we learned that there's there's different classes of zombies. There's a pecking order. You got your regular old run-of-the-mill zombie, and you got your stunt zombies. You know, they get more active, do more athletic things. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. Some scary zombies in this movie. I don't mean to tell you because they they are called the infected in the movie, but they uh, they run. Okay, these aren't your uh, straggle along type zombies. So I've always thought those were the scariest sorts of zombies. They, there was a scene that we were in on. Well, it was one where I had to, yeah, take care of business. I don't know how much I can talk about actually what happens in the movie. But uh, they came out of the woods, some zombies. And like I say, they are capable of running. And it was kind of later in the day. The sun was kind of down, and and here they came, running, and hollering, and it it was whoa, yeah. You know, I mean, it's almost scary knowing it was a movie, but it was it was a little strange. Uh, so pretty good stuff. Uh, and I don't know what the movie will be, how it'll turn out or anything. I'm not involved in the editing, and uh, you can imagine if if I'm in it, John's in it, uh, Matt uh, from. Uh, uh, oh man, drawing a blank. Uh, ranch. I want to say Thunder Ranch. Clint Smith. Oh, we got Thunder Ranch, my ranch. Uh, but but Matt's in there, and uh, and and other other folks. There are actually some people who act a little bit who can act a little bit. <clears throat> Excuse me, losing my voice. But uh, we'll see how it turns out when it finally finally comes out. We'll keep you posted on it. But it was an interesting experience, and uh, John and I enjoyed it. Going up to Michigan, we don't get up that way very often. We went through a museum or two and, you know, Henry Ford there. Dearborn, Michigan is a home place of Ford Motor Company. So it's pretty interesting to tour some of that and uh, had a good trip.
did some great acting, as you can imagine. Whew, boy, hopefully they're good at editing is all I can say. That's all I can say. Oh, hickory nuts are falling. <laughs> hickory nuts are funny. They, they, I have a lot of hickory nut trees here. A lot of hickory trees. They're not really called hickory nut trees. They're hickories, right? And they have hickory nuts on them. Uh, but boy they are prolific many years and they just fall random times of course and uh the dog the golden retrievers i used to have would would get down there on a driveway and munch them they just eat them always be crunching on those things and i remember one time uh, a male golden i had named bud i don't guess you all have seen him i don't know maybe in an early video or two he was a cool golden retriever but one day one just fell right down on his head from way high in the tree. <laughs> you could hear it's like hitting a melon. Uh, but they were always dropping and they were always eating them and chewing on them. But uh, so anyway, you got to keep your cars out from under them if you can. I had a I had a car parked under one that has the large hickory nuts one time. I was for some reason I was driving my truck for two or three days. And I left the car parked under it. it looked like you'd been in a hailstorm. It was a mess. But <clears throat> my voice is trying to, to leave me, sorry. I uh, got up too early. Anybody an early riser? I know many of you know I am. Because you'll give me a hard time for posting a video at 4 in the morning or 5 or whatever it is. The problem I have is I am an early riser. I've always been this way. I wake up you know, early regardless of when I go to bed. So usually not a problem because i don't stay up all that late usually but last night i was up to almost midnight and uh, for some reason and uh and here i am you know 4 30 okay time to wake up so i'm out of the bed uh but anyway i digress now let me check my battery do i have any time left uh i can see well not much if it just goes away i'll uh, i'll make two parts or something but i'll, I'll kind of wrap it up what else were we uh, going to talk about? I had some guns I was uh, going to talk about. What were they? I don't remember. But anyway, we've been doing some interesting firearms, and I've been having fun with them. Uh, again, one of the advantages of doing this is uh, the variety. Uh, I mean, I can't tell you how many different weeks or even days where I might be shooting a, a muzzle-loading shotgun you know, that day and also uh, uh, M1 Garand or uh, no telling what, uh, a Smith & Wesson pistol, like we had the M&P Compact in, we just did a video with it, we'll be posting, you know, uh, how the pistol, you know, or some kind of crazy thing like that. One thing I did was a little bit out of the ordinary, I think I posted a picture on either Instagram or Facebook, was uh, an inline muzzle loader. Now, if you didn't see the picture, you're probably in shock, but I've had a request to do that, and I, I really have, don't have any desire to ever own an inline muzzle loader. I don't hunt. If I did hunt, I would I'd be using my Hawken muzzle loader, you know, or Civil War rifle. Uh, but I thought, well, why not? You know, a lot of guns we do are not necessarily my favorites. Kiapa, Rhino, uh, I, I could name you know, High Point. I could name several that I don't care that much about. But you all requested them. You want to see them and. I think I'll do that. So I just ordered one from, from Buds, and it's, it was actually a pretty nice rifle. It was just the fact it's an inline is the reason I wouldn't have interest in it. But the darn thing worked well. It felt great. It was a CBA Acura V2. Okay. It has scope on it. I thought, well, there's one. It's got the scope, the catmo. I mean, the whole nine yards. It's like totally the opposite <laughs> of a Hawken rifle or something. And let's, let's just do it. And uh, I got all the equipment I needed, you know, copper jacketed bullets, all the stuff that, that you all use that, that hunt with these inline muzzle loaders. Uh, fake black powder, you know, and just all that. And, and we did a video. Uh, in fact, it's coming up, going to be posted soon. Yeah. Yeah, probably within a day or two after, you know, you see this possibly. Okay. So. Never know the exact posting order. You know, I never know it. That's why you can't know it. If I don't even know it. And, uh, and the only reason I don't know it is because I haven't decided on some of it yet. It just depends. But uh, you'll see it pretty soon. Okay, and it might make you want to gag if you hate those things. But a lot of people use them. And they're, they're a part of the shooting world. So, so why not? 
Yeah. We started doing this, I guess, years and years ago with my firearms. So I guess for a period of time, all you really saw were, I guess you could almost say my favorite firearms. Since I own them, I must like them, right? Uh, but then that gradually changed as we start getting requests for this, that, and that, and everything, and then I uh, would get access to them, and you would just get something in that, whether I liked it or not, you know, so it's evolved over the, over the years. Again, if this shuts off all of a sudden, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll, I think I have another battery I can get in it, maybe. Uh, anyway, I don't know what else I was going to talk about anyway, other than, again, I'll, I'll try to do these more often. Uh, but, you know, I can't guarantee it. Maybe I'll even go back to a radio show occasionally. It seems easier to do that for some reason. I won't call it the radio show, probably. Maybe I'll just call it Shooting the Breeze, of course. But I'll be shooting the breeze sort of anonymously. You won't see me. You won't even know it's me for sure. So, so I guess I'll wrap up uh, for my battery dies. I, uh, again, don't forget this bill that's been proposed in Congress, the H.R. 3999, okay? And uh, get on that and make sure you are after your representative, especially if it's one of those sponsoring it, okay? And anybody else, because that's the, the priority right now, all right? Not worrying really about what the NRA did. Was that the smart thing to do? Were they trying to ban stuff and all this kind of things that we're all arguing about? And, you know, the, the Second Amendment community, the firearms community is kind of divided right now in a lot of ways, and that's not really good. It's not really good. Uh, so, and sometimes it's just people's personality. Some people just are determined to hate uh, and have no tact, you know, and no no uh, skills at just communicating with people, you know, or expressing their opinions without uh, offending people. And that's, that's part of it. So it just goes back and forth and never ends. And, and there's a lot of outlets, as we know, around the internet and TV and everywhere where their whole livelihood depends on clickbait or drama, getting attention, you know, saying things that will get attention, giving titles that will get attention, uh, creating drama to bring more people in who are drama lovers. And, and so you got to make something dramatic that's really not dramatic. you got to create, just like the media does on TV, you know, the news stations, they, you got to create division, or politicians do, create division where it doesn't exist and then exploit that and get more viewers, you know, from one side or the other and just kind of feed the hate, uh, you know, just to, to get viewers, right? Gosh, I hope we don't do any of that ever. If we ever have, let me know. <laughs> uh, we just try to do semi-interesting shooting videos. Sometimes they're a little entertaining, like carving a pumpkin or something. Uh, blowing something up occasionally, watermelon, but, you know, man, if we ever get to the point where we are just doing drama for drama's sake and, and creating division, please let me know uh, that, that I don't need to do this and I would quit that day, okay? We just want to provide some education and some entertainment maybe occasionally. It's kind of what we do. We don't plan to change that, all right? And uh, again, I ain't interested in banning anything for the haters out there. Um, keep that in mind. Um, in fact, we're, we've got to rally all the forces here, again, like we did after Sandy Hook and other events, make sure we're all together, at least enough so we can fight. Now, once we won this fight, we can go back to attacking each other maybe or something but i mean i don't spend much time attacking anybody uh no future in that we're too busy we're too busy uh we'll let others create the drama and we're going to be doing what we're doing and we're just so glad that you guys come and watch you gals you know come and watch and uh and hopefully we provide some information that's useful appreciate all the, the really kind uh, messages and comments in the last couple of weeks you know with all this going on uh you know, just so much support. Uh, I, I think some of you see some of the hate out there and you're worried about me or something. <laughs> I, it comes with the territory. And you, if you have a any kind of public presence at all, you're going to have some hate. It may be just a little sliver, but even if it's a little bitty, tiny sliver, if it's a tiny percentage, you know, of, of 
whatever the audience or the people out there, uh, it still seems bigger than it is, right? Uh, so anyway, now things are going great and uh, we are trucking along. We'll talk to you again, uh, well, on some of these topics, in fact, and we'll get John in here. We haven't done one of those sit down uh, vlogs as we like to call them to irritate people for a while. So we're planning to do one of those next week. So we'll talk more about this bill, okay? And really anything you want to talk about in that, that video, just, just, uh, just holler at us while we're doing it and we'll, we'll chat about it. How's that? Okay. <laughs> that makes sense. I was just looking at the camera. No. Okay. Wow. I tell you, I, I really got up too early. <laughs> I was looking at the lens and I thought, you know what? It looks like the, the cap is on the lens, <laughs> but that would make a lot of sense. Wouldn't it? I wouldn't be seeing my picture over there. Oh, uh, I need to go to bed, take a nap. Uh, wow. Got to get into bed earlier. Anyway, uh, it's, it's good to talk to you again. You've been pretty quiet, but that's okay. I did all the talking for you. Don't forget, uh, we've got a rally of troops and anything you can do in that regard, please do it uh, by contacting you know, your representatives and just stay alert, get around the internet and study what's going on. Okay, that's the best advice, I think, is to study what's going on and what you think about it, what you think about it, what you have determined on your own, what you think about it after you get some input around, uh, you know, the various blogs and videos and everything and develop your own opinion about things. Because, boy, there's a lot of people who love to create drama. Well, come here, kitty. Come here. Won't you make an appearance here before I have to... Oh, he about died. Before I have to sign out, come here, kitty, kitty, come here. You don't want to see the people, huh? You don't want to be on, come here. Uh, he's creeping up the steps. He's chickening out, chickening out. So anyway, uh, good to talk to you. And uh, come here, kitty, come here, buddy. He's going to come. Come here, come here, come on up here, come on up here. Uh, come here, big guy. I will come here. You like he loves to be in my lap, but sometimes when I force him, he doesn't stay. <laughs> Say hi to the people now. Now he's cute. He's a cute boy. He really is. He's a little disconcerted now, but he's like a golden retriever. I promise. Now he's going to jump down now, so we can all let go of him probably. But he really is a good cat. There he is. Look at the people. See, even the cat haters out there think you're cute. I'm glad you made an appearance, big guy. I'm glad you made an appearance. Sweet boy, he really comes around and gets in your lap and just sits there, lies there for a while. He's not your typical cat. Now, he's hard to herd, you know, like cats are. You've probably heard that before. But he's a good boy, aren't you? <laughs> Get your butt in my face. What he'll do is he'll stand here like this usually, then he'll lie down. Yep, he's going to leave. Ah, you jumped on my gun. <laughs> That's why you never have him loaded. Uh, in at times like this, anyway. So anyway, I'll, I'll sign off. Uh, you don't expect perfection. This is just rambling, and that's what you get. That's what you get with a shooting the breeze, okay? Well, well buddy, what are you doing? Well, be, be careful. Okay, I'm sorry. Sorry about the, the cat interference, but he's my buddy. He's one of my buddies. He's a good boy. Good to talk to you. Uh, don't forget, again, as I posted on Facebook, uh, get over, in the meantime, take a look at Such. Double O Such's uh, video, okay, on the uh, on this bill that I was talking about. He did an excellent job, uh, as I said in that that posting. Such is a great guy, a good friend. He's not a drama queen, you know. A few of those on the internet. Uh, he's just a good guy. Uh, well, he might be a queen. No, no, no. Sorry, no more jokes. <laughs> I won't pick on Such. He's a great guy. Life is good. 